Hello, sewing people of the internet. So, I got a question from a viewer recently, and it was a really great question. It's actually a topic that I wanted to cover basically since I started this channel six years ago, uh, and now that someone else has asked it, I think it's time for me to address it. So, Simon posted a comment on a video, uh, and he said, Someone mentioned that due to the cost of materials, particularly the 1000 denier Cordura for tactical bags, etc., it's cheaper to just buy one. Is that the case? What do you find is the cost of material and sewing yourself versus store-bought? Well, I, I think there is an easy answer to that question, and then there's the correct answer to that question. The easy answer, which is correct in its own way, is if you need a, and I'm just going to use backpacks as an example, this could be, you know, dining room tables and we could talk about table saws instead of sewing machines and I think the same uh, information applies here. So if you want a backpack and you just need a backpack, that's it. You don't, you don't need a special backpack, you don't care uh, if it has a particular pocket or a particular material. Uh, you want something that's commercially available and you just need that one backpack and that's all you ever need, then absolutely it makes far better financial sense to just buy the backpack. Uh, it would be an idiotic idea to try to make one if you just want that one. Uh, so that's it. That's, yeah, if, if you want to buy a backpack, just buy a backpack. Whoever told you that, Simon, they're correct. Okay, so that's the easy answer. Now let's get to what I think is the correct answer. Uh, no one in their right mind is going to try to make something as complicated as a backpack just because they need a backpack. If you if you already have a sewing machine, you know, that you inherited or was in your house or whatever, uh, that was free, and you scrounged free materials, and it didn't cost you anything except your time, it's still going to cost you an inordinate amount of time to make a, a good quality backpack, especially when you factor in the learning curve of, you know, learning how to make the shapes that you want and sew it so that it's not going to come apart and use the correct materials, etc. So, uh, no one would do that just because they need a backpack. Backpacks are too cheap and too easily available in most places. I, I know that in some third world country that you have to make your own stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. But let's talk about the costs and talk about the benefits of sewing it yourself. Simon, you wrote from the UK. Uh, I am not worldly enough to try to do this in pounds. Uh, so uh, just for the record, I googled it and right now the exchange rate is about uh, 0.75 pounds to one US dollar. So I'm gonna talk about this in US dollars and, and you may have to convert things for yourself, but I think it's close enough that it should make sense anyway. So if it's cheaper to just buy a backpack, why would someone want to learn how to sew? Well. Some of the advantages of being able to make your own gear, you can make exactly what you want. You don't have to buy something off the shelf and try to make it work for your particular purpose, which may be different from what the designer of the backpack had in mind. Uh, if you have particular camera equipment or tactical equipment or whatever it is you need to carry, you may have an item that doesn't fit well in a uh, backpack that otherwise fits you well, or is the color you want, or the material you want, or whatever. So by making your own, you can take ideas from different packs that are commercially available and make your own pack that works perfectly for you. If you aren't prepared to or don't want to make your own, you can also take an existing backpack and modify it to make it fit your needs better. We've all heard the cliche, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, and if you teach a man to fish, he how does the rest of that even go? If you teach a man to fish, he can feed himself forever. And the same is true of learning a skill like sewing. You can buy a backpack, but you know what are you going to do when it breaks? Like any other skill, once you learn how to sew, you'll find applications for it. So I started sewing about six years ago. I really got started as a hobby and started this YouTube channel. In the past six years, I couldn't tell you how many things I've sewn either for myself or for other people. People have paid me to make some stuff. I've made stuff for friends. I've probably technically profited from sewing uh, in that I've probably made a little bit more money than I've invested into it. I'm not going to be a millionaire from sewing. Uh, well, maybe. Subscribe and share this video. 
One other advantage of learning how to sew is even if you decide that making your own gear isn't right for you or is too much of a time investment, you'll at least have a better understanding of how to evaluate the quality of the construction of a piece of gear you might be considering. This last advantage that I'm going to list is the tricky one, and that's your time. If you're the kind of person who looks at your time as a commodity that you could be exchanging for money, and you don't like spending leisure time doing something that isn't purely for the purpose of making money, then a hobby like sewing is probably not for you. So the point being, as a, as a benefit of sewing, you have lots and lots of leisure time spent doing an activity that is a learning activity. Uh, it can be a very peaceful and relaxing activity. It can be very mentally stimulating and challenging. Uh, it can be frustrating. But it's probably better than sitting and watching reality TV. What about the costs? How much does it cost to acquire enough stuff to be able to sew gear for yourself? So uh, I started with a free sewing machine that belonged to my wife that she inherited from her mom. Uh, there are sewing machines in attics and basements and thrift stores and garage sales all over the place. Uh, if you want a sewing machine to learn on or to make some simple gear on, sewing machines are available and, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. One of my favorite sewing machines that I own was uh, $20 at a thrift store. I've paid as little as $12 and I've had machines given to me by people who just didn't want them and knew that I did. Um, I mentioned in another video, but if, if you want a sewing machine, let everyone you know know that you want a sewing machine and you'll probably be able to find one. If you do have to buy one, I mean, even if you went and bought a brand new sewing machine, you're talking 150 bucks, 100 bucks. Uh, I'm not an advocate of new sewing machines, but if you're just trying to get into it, you know, you can certainly get something that will make things the machine isn't a terribly expensive uh, part of the equation as, as hobbies go. Every hobby has its price of admission. But then beyond the sewing machine, uh, there are uh, consumable things like thread that you need to have. Um, there are needles for the sewing machine you need to have. You'll need scissors. You'll need something to mark and measure with. You'll need fabric. Uh, you know, the, the list goes on and on. And I'm going to break down the cost of a project uh, as far as the materials that you actually use in that project are concerned. But, uh, you know, there are costs associated with buying a sewing machine and all the necessary tools that you need. A lot of the tools you may already have because you can use a tape measure that you would use on projects out in your garage. And you may already have scissors that you could use. You don't have to buy the best equipment in the world just to, you know, sew something together. Like any other hobby, you can always upgrade to better and better equipment as your skills improve. One other quick thing on getting started and, and doing it without investing a lot of money. Uh, I think probably the best way to get material to start with uh, and to, to make a project with is to go to a thrift store, garage sale, your, your attic, whatever, and find a decent quality, if you can, duffel bag, maybe luggage, maybe a backpack, anything like that. Something made of a good sturdy material that has some webbing and some buckles and some zipper. And take it apart. Go get a seam ripper. One of these guys. And take the thing apart. A, you're going to get a lot of material that you could use to make maybe some smaller pouches or pockets to practice on. Things that you could still make use of. You, you're not just sewing for the sake of practicing, you're actually making something useful. Uh, and more importantly, the process of taking something apart is an excellent way to learn how it was put together. So if you're watching this because you're interested in getting started and don't really know, you know, where do I order fabric and that kind of stuff, don't order fabric. Go buy something that's, or you may already have a duffel bag. I can't tell you how many times, you know, you see duffel bags where one zipper doesn't work or something like that. Just don't throw it away. Take it apart and learn from it. So part of Simon's question was about the material that he might use for a tactical style backpack. And 1000 denier cordura is very popular, very commonly used for that purpose. I have a roll of it here and I have some other similar fabrics. Uh, 
I've talked about these rolls of fabric that I got, and I, I got an absolute steal of a deal on these from a seller on Craigslist. Uh, probably a deal of a lifetime that I'll never encounter again. Uh, otherwise, I would not have these giant rolls of fabric. Don't feel like you need to buy, in fact, I would say don't go out and buy a giant roll of fabric. It, it's kind of inconvenient and probably not a great idea uh, unless you have a business or something like that. So all that said, when you order fabric online, because uh, you're probably going to have to order Cordura online, most, most fabric stores that you find in your most cities in the U.S. at least aren't going to sell this. Uh, you may have a specialized supplier if you're in a big city, but most people are going to have to order this online. So if you never bought fabric, if this is all new to you, you might think, well, what is a yard of fabric? How much is a yard? How much do I need? I'm going to show you. So the way fabric is sold is in yards, usually. Uh, there are some exceptions. And a yard refers to a linear yard of a roll of fabric. So fabric comes in a roll typically between 58 and 60 inches wide. Um, a lot of like quilting fabrics and more standard fabrics that you would find at a fabric store come on rolls that are only like 48 inches, something like that. And there are some fabrics that are wider, but for Cordura and that style nylon fabric, typically you're looking at 58 to 60 inches wide. Now, the very edges, the, what's called the selvage on the uh, outside edges of the fabric, probably a good half inch of that may not be usable. So whatever the width of your fabric, just know that you, know, you may not be getting that full width as a usable width. So a yard of fabric would be three feet or about a meter uh, of the fabric cut all the way across the roll, and that's what you get. And I'm going to show you what you can expect to do with one yard of fabric. Here you can see that one yard of fabric will easily make a messenger bag from my pattern with plenty of material left over. You can also use one yard of fabric to make the greatest backpack I've ever made. Uh, some of these pattern pieces have to be doubled, uh, so there's not as much left over as it appears. This is for the exterior fabric only. You get another yard of lining fabric. So maybe you're thinking, all right, so what can I make if I get into this sewing machine habit? Well, I made this backpack about two and a half years ago and I've carried it every single day. I mean, literally almost every single day uh, since I've made it. I've carried it to work with me. I've carried it uh, hiking. It's been my carry-on on flying trips. This has been my everyday companion. So you could make something like that. What else? How about a bag made of bicycle inner tubes? A mesh bag for toiletries? A pouch to hold your GoPro accessories? A toiletry bag? Another toiletry bag? A mesh bag to collect trash while paddleboarding? A duffel bag to hold jumper cables in your car? A bag to carry tools while mountain biking? A stuff sack for your backpacking quilt? And a backpacking quilt? Now how much would you pay? But wait, there's more! A denim apron? Another backpack? A set of tree straps? What do you need tree straps for? Well, of course, for your camping hammock with integrated bug net. And a tarp for your hammock with snake skins. Another quilt to keep you warm in your hammock. Or a messenger bag for your brother, a backpack for your friend, a hippopotamus Halloween mask, a pillow for your friend, recover seats for a Porsche 914, a yoga bag, and the world's dumbest motorcycle vest. So I did a quick guesstimate of what it would cost to make a backpack similar to my everyday carry pack. Uh, something relatively simple. Out of 1,000 denier Cordura, lined with 400 denier pack cloth and with some mil-spec webbing to make some PALS webbing for molly attachments and the uh, strap attachments, things like that, and typical tri-glides, side release buckles, and a, uh, a bit of zipper to make the opening. And what I came up with, as you can see here, is about 33 bucks. So again, the question is, what do you value your time at? So is it worth it? to sew your own gear. If you're asking if it's worth it to sew one backpack, no. If you're asking, is it worth it to learn to custom make my own gear, modify gear that I want to modify, repair gear that needs repair, make gear for other people? Uh, yeah, I mean, unquestionably it's worth it. I think sewing's a great and rewarding hobby and you can't really measure the value of making things for yourself in purely economical terms. Uh, although 
once you get the hang of it, yeah, you can probably make something cheaper than you can buy it. I made this video because a viewer like you asked me a question. If you have a question for me, you can post it in the comments section. I try really hard to respond to all the comments I get. I hope this channel one day grows so big that I can no longer do that. But right now, I, I'm pretty successful at it, I think. If I've missed a comment you've made or not answered your question, I apologize. Uh, if you want to reach me directly, you can email me by going to the About tab on my channel and click on the View Email address and uh, email me if you have questions or suggestions or comments. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. If you think that someone else you know might like this video, please share it with them. Thanks for watching.